What's up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York invading Columbus, Ohio for Sonic Temple Festa. Today we are here with Evan Conrad. Thank hey, you man. for your time. Uh, anytime, man. Yeah. Thanks it, for having me. It's so awesome to have you here. Come on, Snake, Let's Rattle is your latest single. That's what correct. I'm, what I'm curious is, being that this is the single, is this like a clear indication on maybe like what your whole catalog would sound like when playing live, or do you tend to like to experiment with your sound? I definitely experiment a bit. It is. Uh, it's a great example, though, because it's got two sides to the song. There's a very like rock-based attitude side, and then it goes into a more melodic, anthemic side. And I like to explore, you know, both sides and everywhere in between. So it's a good starting point. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Do you like to go when you're making music? Do you start off with like a preconceived idea and work off of that, or is there a lot of improvising involved? Both. I like to have an outline and then and then work freely within that. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So um, start with an overall concept of like what emotions I'm trying to write about or what story I'm trying to tell, and then uh, and then I really get specific about what sounds represent those things and uh, what the production will feel like and what the lyrics are going to be. You know, so it's a bit of both. Yeah. Awesome. Do you need to hear music before lyrics are come up with, or does sometimes you have a concept and maybe that helps determine the music? I, concepts definitely help. Sometimes, uh, though, when you're you know writing a riff or there's a drum beat or something, you just it reminds you of something or, or it channels an idea within you, and uh, and then yeah, it just comes out. So again, both sides, man. Inspiration comes from everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And you just answered my next question. You're looking both inward and outward. A hundred percent. Yeah. I'm always writing stories, so a lot of my songs aren't about me personally, but I do take them on and, you know, try to become whatever that is while I'm writing it and uh, experience it through myself and my own, ex you know, emotions and uh, memories and things that have come up for me. Yeah, for sure. Do you like to leave your music open to interpretation or are you trying to maybe inform the listener or maybe get them to see things from your point of view? Um, I think it's up to them. You know, if they want if they want the information about what the song's about, it's always going to be out there for them. But me personally, when I grew up listening to music, I, I liked making up my own stories, you know what I mean? So I like leaving room for that. I think it's very important to consider the listener and sort of understand that they aren't always going to interpret it how you interpreted it. And that's one of the most beautiful parts of music. I feel like if you bend over backwards sometimes to try to get the listener to see it, you're just going to yeah. drive yourself crazy. Totally. It's, I mean, it's okay to be vague and it's okay to let people put their own story on your music. That's what I hope for is that they take it and it becomes a part of their life, you know? Absolutely. Now, um, you're playing at Sonic Temple Festival uh, today, <laughs> which is a kick-ass lineup with yes. everything. Um, when you're playing at a festival like this versus, you know, playing like at a club or a regular concert venue, is yeah. it a different experience altogether? Entirely, entirely different. It's uh, usually hot, like today. Yeah. And uh, we're all wearing black, which doesn't yeah, help. No, it's like everyone got the memo. I love it. <laughs> um, it's a bit different. Usually, there's no sound check, right? So you just gotta kind of have your your stuff together, and it's all about teamwork. I find it at a festival more so. I mean, it's always about teamwork, but. It really pays off if you can uh, just communicate clearly with everyone about what you need, what's happening, and 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 uh, plus the crowd is bigger usually. Yeah. <laughs> it's intense. There's just lots of people, and yeah. and uh, it's lo it's lovely to be outside too. I love playing music outside. I heard a uh, playing to a bigger crowd is actually sometimes less stressful. It can be because if you're playing at like a smaller club where you can yeah. hear every word everybody's saying, sure, it, like. That could hit you even harder. Totally. I had a guy make fun of my shirt in, in Boston like three days ago in a small club, <laughs> which is, I loved it. It was great. It was hilarious. But like, you know, things can happen there for sure. It's, it's um, sometimes playing a big stage like this can be comforting because it's quite alienating. There's a lot of space between you and the crowd, whereas at a club, I mean, there's pros and cons to both and it depends on the show, but the crowd is like right there. And I, I love, uh, I'm a big sound nut. I think festivals always sound better. Yeah. You really get an idea of the, the scope of the band and what they're trying to create sonically at a festival. Um, whereas clubs, it can be a little disjointed. People are drinking or, what, you know, whatever it is. I feel like here they really get the power of the music, no matter who it is. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the final question I want to ask you is you mentioned you're from Vancouver, Canada. I did, and yeah. There's a lot of great bands out there. I don't know if you heard of this rock band from Vancouver called The Veer Union. I haven't. 
Oh, they're really good. I'm going to check them out yeah, yeah, but, like, uh, right away. But there's so many great bands of all styles there. You know, yeah, totally. Deer Union versus a heavy band like Arch Spire, yeah. Home of Rush, Voivod, you totally. name it. Totally. So coming from Vancouver, is there like a scene that you kind of started out in, or did you have to travel more to the States to get your name out oh, there? Oh, man. I've always been kind of doing my own thing. Like, I've self-produced all my music, so I've been more of like a bedroom artist for a very long time. It's more in the studio. Did a lot of touring with other bands where I wasn't, you know, the feature artist, but I was just playing keys or bass or guitar or what have you. And that's really how I got to connect with the scene. Instead of putting myself out there, I literally just put myself in their bands <laughs> instead. That's a good idea. Yeah, it was fun. I loved it. I learned so much, you know. It taught me about uh, just respecting the process and, 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 and all sides of that process and what it goes into playing a show and putting something together it allowed me to really observe before before taking on my own thing yeah definitely so before we go i'd like to thank you so much for your time anytime man is there just uh, anything else um oh, come on snake let's rattle is the come on snake let's rattles out uh there's another song called the long way out that's out now you can check out and go to evanconrad.com for all the other information my instagram at evan conrad um you know twitter all of it man you can Awesome. Get to me however you want. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Evan. <laughs> thank you, man. Pleasure. Everybody, Evan Conrad. Come on, Snake. Let's rattle. Newest single. Pick that up if you haven't already. This is Alex from Happy New York. We'll see you next time. See ya.